I'll be teaching you the different kinds of badges, where to put them, and how to sew them on. To begin, we'll go over the CTC qualification badges. The Air Cadet program offers many different summer training opportunities. This includes general training, basic drill and ceremonial, drill and ceremonial instructor, basic survival, survival instructor, basic fitness and sports, fitness and sports instructor, military band, basic musician, military band intermediate musician, and military band advanced musician. Also including, we have pipe band, basic musician, pipe band intermediate musician, pipe band advanced musician, air rifle marksmanship instructor, basic aviation, advanced aviation, basic aviation technology and aerospace course, advanced aerospace, advanced aviation technology course, aircraft maintenance, and advanced aviation technology course, airport operations. We also offer two courses in which you can walk away with your pilot's license. The first, the glider pilot, and the power pilot. Further badges include proficiency insignias. First, we have the fitness insignias, which range all the way from bronze to excellence. Next, we have music, which ranges from basic to level five. Then we have marksmanship, which ranges from level one marksman to distinguished marksman. And finally, we have specialty, which includes emergency first aid, standard first aid, glider pilot front seat familiarization, and glider pilot back seat familiarization. There are also proficiency levels, which go all the way from level one to level five. Next, we have the rank badges. This includes LAC, which look like a pair of propeller wings, corporal, which are two V-shaped lines, flight corporal, which is two V-shaped lines with a crown, sergeant, which is three V-shaped lines stacked on top of each other, flight sergeant, which is three V-shaped lines with a crown above it, warrant officer second class, which is a circle with a crown in the middle, and warrant officer first class, which is a slightly more complicated shape to describe. We also have the air cadet insignia, which is a round badge that goes on your wedge, and the location badge, which goes on your shoulder and identifies which squadron you belong to. Next, we'll go over the badge placement. First, we'll discuss the location badge. This badge is located two centimeters below the hemline from where your sleeve meets your shoulder and is directly centered. Next, we'll move down the arm to the rank badge. This is placed midway between the elbow and the shoulder and is also centered on the arm. Next, this is only for the left sleeve and only involves proficiency levels. If you do not have a fitness, music, marksmanship, or specialty badge, you will place your proficiency level badge directly along the cuff of the sleeve center. If you have fitness, marksmanship, or specialty badge, you will place those in line of three along the cuff. If you also have your music badge, you will place that one centimeter above those, and then you will place your, fit, your proficiency level badge one centimeter above the music badge. Next, moving on to the right sleeve, you will again start with your location badge, two centimeters from the hem of where your sleeve meets your shoulder, and you will move down to the cuff where you will place any of your CTC badges centered along the middle of your sleeve. These will be placed directly above the cuff, starting in the middle and working outwards on either side. If you have your Warrant Officer Second Class or Warrant Officer First Class badge, these will be placed 90 centimeters above the cuff. Now we're moving on to how to sew the badge onto the tunic. And in this example, I will be sewing on my rank badge. First, you're going to want to start by removing your previous rank badge if this is your second or more promotion. Keep in mind that while you're performing most of these steps, you will be using sharp objects, so adult supervision is recommended. To remove the badges, we recommend using a thread cutter. If you do not have one of these, you may very, very carefully use a knife or go to a craft store and buy your own, which I would recommend more than using a knife. To begin, pick a spot anywhere along the side of the badge and begin to cut. Eventually, after a good couple of cuts, you can begin to just pull the badge off and the string will just unmute itself. However, you may come to a couple spots where you need to begin to cut again if too much string is left. Now, if your ink bag is off, you can set it aside and try your best to pick out any little threads left behind in your tunic. Now that your rank bag is removed, you can begin positioning your new one. As stated before, your new bag should go in the middle between your shoulder and your elbow. This is most easily done 
by putting the sleeve on and positioning it from there. Once you have the sleeve on, you can begin taking the bag and moving it around to where you think it may be. Do this by bending your elbow to find where the bend is and putting the bag on. Then, be very careful, but take a holding needle and find a good spot to poke it in. Once you have one of these in, take off the sleeve and put it down onto your table to begin properly securing it. Spread out the sleeve so you can see it in its entirety and that it is flat. This is done to ensure that the badge is centered on the sleeve. Then you may use as many holding needles as you'd like to ensure that it's secure. Then if you would like, you may double check that the badge is in the correct spot. Keep in mind that if you've not done this very many times, this may take a couple of tries. As you can see, the badge is relatively centered between my elbow and my shoulder. Now I will remove the sleeve and begin to sew. To prepare for sewing, you're going to want to first find a thread that matches the color of the uniform and badges. To begin, take your thread and attempt to eyeball to the best of your ability how much thread you think you'll need. I do this by eyeballing the thread and then gently laying it around the side of the badge and making sure to have a fair bit of extra. It's always better to have too much thread than not enough. Next, you're going to want to find an appropriate needle size. Any regular size needle will be fine, but you definitely don't want something this big. This will leave extremely large holes in your uniform and could actually get it. Now, you're going to want to attempt to thread the needle. This can be quite difficult if you do not have steady hands, and if you cannot do it, ask an adult to help you if they're not already doing this. Next, pull the short side through the loop to ensure that you have some extra and that it won't fall out. Then, you're going to want to cut the end that is still attached to the spoolie and tie it in a knot so that you don't pull it all the way through the fabric. I recommend pulling the loose end through the loop a number of times to ensure that you have a thick knot. Next, if you have a long tail like I do, you can just cut that extra away as it'll dangle and be annoying when you start to wear it. Now you can begin sewing. Most of the materials I use can be easily found at your local craft store. Additionally, if you would like, you have the option of using thimbles. For the thimbles, you can put them on your thumb and point your finger if you think you may poke yourself multiple times with the needles. I do tend to poke myself, but I just find it easier to sew without the thimbles. To begin, you're going to want to start from the inside of the sleeve so that you do not have the tail on the outside. You're going to begin by finding the inside of your sleeve, find the inside hole, and sticking your arm in there. Next, you're going to need to find a starting point. I generally use a corner, but it's really up to you. You're going to start wherever you choose to start and push through and gently pull until you feel it snag. That means the knot has hit the sleeve. Next, you're going to move a very small amount to either direction. Remember, you need to stay off of the silver because the blue matches the background. And you're going to poke through again and retain your sleeve and pull through. It may take a couple of stitches to really get going, but once you do, it's pretty easy from there. You just continue to poke through and pull through. When you're in the sleeve, it's okay to go a little bit further along if you wanna do slightly looser stitches. But remember when you're up on top, that is the area that people will see. So you wanna make sure that it's not too wide so people don't see the thread. Once you get past one of your securing needles, you may remove it as it is now sewn on. At the points of the badges, you want to be very careful to make sure that it lays flat. If your badge points out, it doesn't look nearly as sharp and professional. If your thread comes out of your needle while you're sewing, don't panic. It happens, it will probably happen more than once. Just simply re-thread it through the hole and then continue. Many people have it in their head that sewing is extremely difficult, when in reality, it just takes a little bit of experience and some practice. Sewing is also an extremely handy tip to have in the future. Should you ever need to hem pants, sew a hole, 
or do you any other badges. As you begin to reach the end of your badge, you're going to start to wonder how do you finish it off. I don't particularly have a very specific method on how to do this. I know there is a specific way. The way I do it is I just sew that one section. It's not a permanent or necessarily a very good solution. It's just the way that I've found works best for me and my badges have never fallen off or come undone. And no one has ever said anything about it. So if you do know a better way of finishing off your badge, you may certainly do that. And if you would like to, you may put it in the comments. Now, I reversed my sleeve, so I flip it inside out. Only the part with the badge, though. And I just sew through along, not through the badge, just more through the sleeve, a couple of times to create a bunch of loops. And then after that, I sew through the loop, perpendicular to it, to finish off. Then when you're done, you'll take the excess, Tie in knot up several times as you did to start, and then you'll trim the excess. And there you go. That is how you sew on your rake badges. If you have any music, fitness, specialty, or CPC badges, as I said before, they go along the brim of your cuff, and you would sew them on in the exact same manner you sewed on your rake badge. As I said before, many things sewing is a hard and tedious task. But in reality, it should only take between 10 and 30 minutes to sew on a badge, which may sound like a long time, but if you have a good audiobook or movie to watch, it really goes by quite fast. Thank you for watching the tutorial on how to sew on your badges and where to place them. If you have any questions, be sure to contact any of the seniors or myself, and we'd be happy to help you. Thank you so much for watching. Have a good rest of your day.